Okay, our next speaker is Taraj Romani from Ghent University. We're going to tell us about uh, two dimensional chiral separation. Sorry, which one is that one? Which one is the next one? Thank you for the intro. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my presentation is about combination of temperature responsive and uh, chiral liquid chromatography as a two dimensional. Um, as a comprehensive two-dimensional liquid chromatography for the analysis of uh, chiral compounds. <clears throat> the outline of presentation is introduction of chiral chromatography and um, comprehensive two-dimensional liquid chromatography, also the modulation problem in that. Then uh, introduction of temperature responsive liquid chromatography and how it can solve modulation problem in LCLC. Uh, moreover, we have a result of TRLC times chiral RPLC for chiral screening of pharmaceutical compounds, followed by its advantages and limitations, and then we use uh, hard cutting to DLC for complete resolution, and the final part is conclusion. Uh, chiral chromatography, when a molecule uh, has a chiral center, it has two enantiomers. These enantiomers are mirror images of each other and they have same physical chemical properties, but when they react with enzyme in the living system, they behave differently. So their separation is important. Uh, and because they have same physical chemical properties, it's not possible to separate them with a conventional chromatograph. So we have to move to the chiral chromatograph. In chiral chromatography, the a chiral selector or a chiral molecule is used in a stationary phase. And uh, when enantiomers are exposed to the chiral selector, they have different interaction. One of them has, uh, has three interaction and the other has only two interaction. And based on this difference, they can be separated. Uh, this interaction should be some kind of a strong interaction, such as hydrogen binding or pi pi interaction. And the stationary phase should create this one. So stationary phase should be functionalized with different functional groups. And this functional group can create the selectivity for uh, uh, the chiral column for CSPs. Uh, there are several types of uh, a stage, chiral stationary phase, such as polysaccharide brush type cyclodextrin. Uh, but the most common are polysaccharide and brush type. In the polysaccharide, a polymer of a sugar such as uh, cellulose or amylose will be immobilized or coated on the surface of silica, but in the brush type, just a small molecule such as vancomycin will be immobilized on the surface of silica. One of the previous problems of these CSPs was that they were too uh, slow. So the uh, a stationary the CSP is based on a small particles, a small silica were developed. That in that, uh, which in that actually, uh, in a super, actually there are two types of a small silica. One of them is superficially or core shell. That is uh, because of limited diffusion distance and actually narrow, <coughs> narrow particle size distribution. It always showed better efficiency, speed, and resolution. But in chiral chromatography, it's just showed better performance for the brush type column, not for polysaccharide. For the polysaccharide, a still fully porous particle uh, is used, and it's because of a uh, high surface area. So uh, more chiral selector can be loaded, and it can be, it can show the better performance for these types of chiral uh, column or these types of CSPs. Uh, so, in this study, both types of this column were selected uh, to be investigated. The other thing is types of chromatography in chiral chromatography. Uh, actually, because most of an enantiomer are in the water or buffer in enzyme or, or actually matrices with lots of salt, and these materials are not compatible and soluble with the uh, carbon dioxide or organic solvent. So, uh, RPLC is preferred 
than uh, actually the SFT or uh, normal phase chromatography. On the other hand, RPLC is the most used HPLC mode, and most of development, most of column development is just in the RPLC, such as these fast uh, CSPs are actually developed for the uh, RPLC mode. Also, there are a lot of improvement in chiral chromatography, but still one dimensional is not fine enough to uh, analyze complicated samples. So we have to move to the two dimensional system. In two dimensional system, uh, in the hard cutting, uh, chiral chromatography has been used in the second dimension when removing interference or matrix effect is required before uh, chiral analysis, or it can be used in both dimension then high chiral selectivity is required to analyze the compound with more than one chiral center. But in the comprehensive mode, uh, before invention of fast CSP, chiral chromatography just used in the first dimension because in the second dimension we need a very fast method. But after introducing the fast CSP, it was able to be used in both dimension or in the second dimension, but still there is one problem. Actually, it, that, it is that uh, in both dimension, same mobile phase composition should be used. And this is just make this system suitable for some specific compound, not for a wide range of compounds. And uh, this is because of the modulation problem. So what is the modulation problem? In comprehensive system, when the sample transfer from first dimension to the second dimension, it contains mobile phase. If this small white phase be stronger than the more white phase in the second dimension, it can affect the peak shape and the retention time <coughs> of the peak in the second dimension. This is an example of the uh, modulation problem that one of my colleagues prepared this. In both dimensions, RPLC was used, and when high concentration of acetonitrate transfer to the second dimension, uh, the peak shape and retention time were changed. So how we can solve this problem? We have to find two compatible uh, techniques to use in the comprehensive. And because we are going to use uh, RPLC in the second dimension, so we have to find one uh, technique that is compatible with RPLC. One of them is side exclusion chromatography that is compatible with RPLC, but uh, it's just suitable for large molecules. The other is using ion exchange chromatography. It is also needs a high salt concentration that can create the other uh, problems. And the last one is temperature responsive liquid chromatography, which is completely compatible with RPLC. Uh, what is the temperature responsive liquid chromatography? In this technique, the mobile phase is 100% water, and the stationary phase is modified silica with temperature responsive polymer. These polymers in high temperature is completely dehydrated and behave like a apolar stationary phase, and in low temperature, it's hydrophilic and behave like a polar stationary phase. Uh, and temperature can be used in a set of organic solvent in this technique. And this is an example of comfortable measurement in different temperature. And as you see, when the temperature is increased, the retention time also increased. So in this study, we used TRLC in the first dimension and chiral RPLC in the second dimension uh, to solve the modulation problem. So seven different pharmaceutical compounds, which all of them are chiral and the chirality is important and they have different log P were selected. The first one is hexobarbital, then meanserin, secobarbital, colorotalidone, warfarin, ibuprofen, and oxazepam. And these seven compounds were measured on the C80 on the TRLC column. The column uh, is poly uh, enteropyl acrylamide. The column stationary phase. And as you see at the high temperature, we have one coelution, the peak number is six and seven, and also the retention time is too high. And also at the low temperature at 50 at five degree, we also have some coelution. So a gradient in temperature is used to get the best separation of the compound. And in the second dimension, seven different pharmaceutical, seven different chiral columns uh, were used. That five of them are based on polysaccharide and two of them are brush type. The brush type are the silica of the brush type are uh, superficially and the polysaccharide is polypros. And because we have different inner diameter for 
these columns, actually for the brush type, the inner diameter is 3, three millimeter, and for the other is 4.6 millimeters. So we use different mobile phase when we use, sorry, we use different method, method when we use uh, these columns, but the modulation time is same, which means actually the time of, the runtime of second dimension is same. And for different mobile phase composition were used, the aqueous phase uh, was acetic or neutral buffer, and the modifier was acetonitrile or mixing of acetonitrile and methanol. So after each uh, sequence running, we uh, got 28 contour plot. These are the seven best contour plots from the, each column. And as you see, we have some separation for each chiral separation for each compound in different conditions. The best one is here the, on the cellulose four. But you can see the chiral compound number one, number two, number four, number seven. We have chiral separation on these compounds. Uh, and yeah, the <coughs> separation is only in 100 seconds, in less than 100 seconds. And also in the superficially raised column, we have a uh, current separation faster, even less than one minute. And, but because we only had two columns here, they cannot create enough selectivity. So we have to use all the columns. These, com these plots are the output of these tools. It shows the amount of resolution of each anonymous separation, of anonymous separation of each compound, and uh, under the different condition, under the different uh, column, and also different uh, mobile phase composition. And also it shows the optimal condition for anonymous separation of compounds. Uh, we have at least one suitable condition for each compound, and all compounds are, are separated, but some of them are not fully separated. So we have to move to the hard cutting mode to get the best separation for all of them. So uh, we use also hard cutting here with the best condition that we got from comprehensive mood, but with longer gradient. So we got the full separation for all of them. And then the repeatability of method was investigated that shows the method is completely repeatable. But to show the effect of TRLC on chiral chromatography, we replace TRLC with RPLC and see the results. I'm going to compare it. At the first time I mentioned, we develop a method uh, on the RPLC. The column is C18, but the same dimension with the column that we have in TRLC. And also the mobile phase. In the mobile phase, we use acetonitrile, and the flow rate is the same. So, comparison of one of the contour plots from TRLC and uh, chiral. And as you see here, we have chiral separation for compound number one, two, four, and seven. But when we use RPLC, we lost these chiral separations. And for the other compounds that we didn't have chiral separation, when we are using RPLC, we still don't have chiral separation. Also, we have a worse pitch shape than we uh, actually using the TRLC. So uh, these tools uh, actually can offer a problem. Actually, these techniques offer a promising tool for achiral and chiral screening. The benefit of this tool is using temperature responsive in the first dimension. That uh, actually that caused to uh, complete refocusing of solute at the beginning of second dimension. Also, it allows to use convenient variety of mobile phase in the second dimension. And uh, this tool also can be used for fully automated screening for optimal chiral condition. And then with this condition, herb cutting can be used to get the full separation. And at the end, I'd like to thank uh, my supervisor, Professor Lien, and all my colleagues at the separation science group, and also organization team that give me this opportunity to present my work here. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.